Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Monday, August 7th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. To train generative artificial intelligence programs to sound like humans, AI companies have taken a lot of information from authors, artists, and internet publishers. And those groups are increasingly expressing their concern and displeasure with that practice. Some are even going to battle with the creators of these programs. And that could have a big impact on the AI boom. Our AI reporter Deepa Sita Raman is here to discuss that. So Deepa, I want to talk about some of the reactions to how these AI programs were built. Let's start with the platforms and the news publishers. What are places like Reddit or even news publishers like the Wall Street Journal's parent company, News Corp, saying about this? Increasingly, there's been this awareness that a lot of these large language models have been built on the back of a lot of work from professional writers and news organizations and other companies. And so earlier this year, we saw Reddit clamp down on their API and say, people are not going to be able to just suck information out of our system the way they used to. If they want this material, they're going to have to pay for it. Twitter did something similar. And now you're seeing news publishers say the same thing. They're saying, hey, wait a minute, are there paywalled articles in there? Because if this stuff is paywalled, shouldn't you be paying for it? And authors particularly authors that have books and other material that is still covered by a copyright, they're saying, hey, this goes well past the fair use argument. You're profiting from this material, and that means we deserve compensation. And so there are a lot of different groups right now looking at these large companies that have these AI models and saying, Give me a little information about what exactly you're doing. Is my data in there? And what are you doing with it? What are the companies behind these generative AI tools like OpenAI, Google, or Microsoft saying about these complaints over the use of content? Our understanding is that the companies themselves are you know, engaging with the publishers. Google says that they're trying to develop a better understanding of the business model for these products. And they wanted to prioritize sending valuable traffic to news publishers as they develop AI tools. OpenAI and others basically said, you know, that they value the work of authors and creators and would like to work with them to figure out a way where everyone could be happy. So at the moment, they're not saying too much. I mentioned at the start that some of these creators were starting to take this as more of a fight. What are they doing exactly? There have been a series of lawsuits from different writers, and there have been a couple of proposed class action lawsuits. The most notable would be Sarah Silverman, the comedian, and two other authors sued OpenAI and Meta because she believes that those two companies ingested and analyzed whole copies of her book, which she and her lawyers are arguing goes well beyond fair use. There was also an open letter written by thousands of authors. Those authors include Margaret Atwood and James Patterson demanding that the top AI companies get permission and pay writers for their use of their material in training. Are there any voices pushing back and saying, you know, all this content should be fair game for generative AI to use? There are definitely some technologists who think that, you know, if the material is out there on the public web, then it's fair game and it should be used by whoever wants to use it. To that, though, there is a counterpoint, which is a lot of these authors say their material shouldn't be on the public web in that way. You know, a lot of these news articles or these books that are published in full online, like you'll get that material from pirated websites. But this is a different case where the authors are seeing, hey, this isn't just a couple of readers here and there finding my work and then reading it. These are large tech companies that are systematically gobbling up this kind of material so that they can eventually make money and profit. So what does all of this escalating tension then mean for the AI boom that we're seeing right now? 
What you're seeing is there are a lot of different competing forces here. AI is something everybody in the world is talking about. There's a large and growing belief that this is going to be a game changer for the global economy, that it's going to change the way we communicate with one another, that you know eventually it'll change the way news is disseminated and information is shared. But this is the kind of development that kind of puts the brakes on it a little bit, potentially. Like in the absolute extreme case, you could see a scenario where some of these companies may have to delete some of the models that are based on copyrighted material. You know, and that's a ton of money potentially wasted. And at the moment, my understanding, it's not possible to go through the training data and just pull out the copyrighted material. So that's like the most extreme case. There are other cases where the companies may need to pay for use of this data. They might have to pay some kind of fine. But even legal experts who are sympathetic to the authors make this point that, you know, you're dealing with copyright issues that the courts really haven't grappled with before. So how do you reach out to every single news organization or a writer about their work? What is the mechanism for seeking and securing that permission? So there's a lot of open questions about exactly what can be done. That's our reporter, Deepa Sita Raman. And that's it for today's Tech News Briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.